Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about factor 10, deficiency. In previous videos, we have talked about hemophilia A, which is factor 8, hemophilia B, which is factor 9, and hemophilia C, or factor 11, deficiency. Today is factor 10. Let me answer the question of the previous video. Please mention six or more X-linked recessive disease. First, if it's X-linked recessive, it's going to be more common in males than females. Okay, let's organize ourselves. Philia, A and B, and color blindness. If you ask any biology teacher, oh, what are the X-linked recessive disease that you know? Oh, hemophilia and color blindness, and that's about it. That's because he's a biology teacher. Then, if you are a freaking doctor, you need to learn all of this. So, let's start with the most common enzyme deficiency in the freaking world, which is G6PD deficiency. After this, since here we had the second item talking about something related to vision, let's add something related to vision called ocular albinism. After this, let's go to the lysosomal storage diseases. We have H like H. This was hemophilia. This is Hunter syndrome and Fabry disease. Fabry and Hunter. Hunter and Fabry. All of the other lysosomal storage diseases are autosomal recessive, not X-linked recessive. So all of them are autosomal recessive except two. Hunter and Fabry. Thank you. Hey, have you ever heard of HIV AIDS? Yeah, it's an acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Oh, but let's talk about the genetic congenital immunodeficiency. Oh yeah, you mean the inherited immunodeficiency? Yep. We have Burton A gamma globulinemia and Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. These two are X-linked recessive disease, therefore they are commoner in males than females. And last but not least, go to the muscular dystrophies. We have Duchenne and Becker. Which one is worse? Usually Duchenne. And we have talked about these two in previous videos. And just to, because this does not fit in any category, OTC deficiency. Ornithine transcarbamylase deficiency. Carbamylase deficiency. Who named these things? Steps of hemostasis, vasoconstriction, then the primary hemostasis, the secondary hemostasis, the fibrinolysis, and then regeneration and repair. But they go in order. If you do not have primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis is very unlikely. If you do not have good, solid, robust secondary hemostasis, tissue regeneration is not going to happen. And that's why one of the symptoms of factor 10 deficiency is bleeding and delayed wound healing. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. So factor 10 deficiency is a problem with secondary hemostasis. What do you think is going to happen to PT and PTT? Both tests will be prolonged. This is primary hemostasis or the pleated plug and we don't care about this right now. Now this is secondary hemostasis which we actually care about. Where is factor 10? Factor 10 is here. It's in the coagulation cascade. This is secondary hemostasis but 10 is in the middle. It's in the common pathway in the center. Therefore expect that PT will be prolonged as well as PTT and even TT. And I've told you before that factor 10 is Lionel Messi, the most important player in the whole team. So let's go. Factor 10 deficiency. What's going to happen? PT prolonged, PTT prolonged. How about TT? Could be normal, could be prolonged. Coagulation factors. Here's the number, here's the name, here is the disease. We have talked about these before. Remember hemophilia A was factor 8, B with factor 9. How about C? It was factor 11. How about factor 10? It's here. This is factor 10 deficiency. Please note that some modern textbooks have become super sophisticated to the point of being stupid and they have dropped out the name hemophilia C. They no longer call it hemophilia C, they just call it factor 11 deficiency. Why did they drop it? They wanted us to learn that hemophilia is always X-linked and therefore they stopped calling hemophilia C hemophilia C because this was not X-linked recessive disease, this was autosomal recessive and therefore they just call it factor 11 deficiency similar to factor 10 deficiency this is not a hemophilia this is just a factor deficiency and it's also autosomal recessive so when you say hemophilia a or b it's excellent recessive any other factor it's probably autosomal recessive that's why what they are trying to convey but they are stupid what is wrong with hemophilia c for heaven's sake what's the difference between primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis we have talked about this before what are the clinical symptoms in a patient with factor 10 deficiency? Oh, secondary hemostasis problems. Okay, how about if the patient is a neonate? What's going to be the most common symptom? Oh, hemarthrosis, like ble bleeding into joints. Yeah, in a neonate who is not walking. Like, your level of wokeness is astonishing. No, Jeffrey, in neonates, the most common bleeding will be bleeding after umbilical cord separation or bleeding after circumcision. Like, think, people think.
And we have a pharmacology marathon on Facebook. Please come join us. Bazillion questions out there. Hemophilia A and B, X-linked recessive. This hemophilia A had a problem with factor 8. How about hemophilia B? Had problem with factor 9. Factor 10 is here. It's not a hemophilia. Hemophilia C is factor 11, but now we do not call it hemophilia C. I don't know why. Maybe because it's just autosomal recessive. It's also very rare. Hemophilias are common. These are rare. So the commons are excellent recessive, so we call them hemophilias. The less common are autosomal recessive, and we do not call them hemophilia for some reason. My goodness, what happened to medicine? We are over-classifying our butts these days. The 25% discount towards my antibiotics course is still available for 12 students only. Go to my website and use the promo code antibiotics25. It's medicosisperfectionalist.com. Factor 10 deficiency is an autosomal recessive disease. Therefore, consanguinity. And therefore, it's going to be commoner in a certain group or population. In case of factor 10 deficiency, it's people living in Iran. And these are some autosomal recessive diseases, just to illustrate the point of consanguinity. Since today's topic is factor 10 deficiency, Iranian, same thing with factor 13 deficiency. But I'm sure if we went to talk about a hemophilia expert from Iran, he can probably pinpoint the disease to a specific location or specific group inside Iran, not the entire country. It's all about consanguinity, baby. Here is the autosomal recessive disease pedigree, and that's why consanguinity is a risk. Factor 10 deficiency, it's congenital, it's autosomal recessive, therefore consanguinity, therefore in this case, Iranians, pathophysiology, there is decreased factor 10 activity. Clinically, we have the anatomical or deep bleeding, if I'm a neonate, bleeding after separation of the umbilical cord, and bleeding on circumcision. Adults, hemarthrosis, hematomas, latri bleeding, retroperitoneal bleeding, and some mucocutaneous bleeding as well, such as petechiae, purpura, ecchymoses, etc. Plated count and bleeding time are perfectly normal. How about platelet aggregometry? Also normal. How about PT, PTT, and TT? All of them are prolonged. TT could be normal. Coagulation time is a historical test that's no longer used. It will be prolonged because this en encompasses the entire pathways, like extrinsic, intrinsic, and common, all of them. Mixing study will help you differentiate between a deficiency and an inhibitor. Treatment, if the patient lacks factor 10, give the patient factor 10. If it's an inhibitor, you can give factor 10A. But hey, medicosis, what if I work at a hospital that does not have factor 10? Then give the thing that contains all the factors. It's called fresh frozen plasma. Also, since this is similar to hemophilia, there is lots of bleeding. Iron deficiency anemia is common, so treat the anemia. Factor 10 deficiency is in a category of diseases called rare or recessively inherited coagulation disorders or RICD. What's the most common symptom? Bleeding. How about other symptoms? Other than bleeding, yeah, thrombosis. Yeah, anything that can make you bleed can make you thrombose. Case in point, Mr. Thrombin. Thrombin by itself is pro-coagulation, but let thrombin bind to its modulator, thrombomodulin, and now you have thrombin-thrombomodulin complex. It's anti-coagulation. Anything that can make you clot can make you bleed. Case in point, DIC. Case in point, TTP. You remember the plated microthrombi? They're called thrombi, so there's thrombosis, and you bleed. There's hemolysis. There's petechia, purpura, ecchymosis, etc. Also, if you remember factor 1 deficiency, Mr. Hypofibrinogenemia, symptoms included bleeding and thrombosis. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Decrease wound healing, yeah, because for wound healing we need primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis, then we need fibrinolysis and then regeneration and repair. If there is no secondary hemostasis, there is no regeneration or repair, so there is delayed wound healing. Bone cysts can happen, pregnancy loss is not uncommon. All right, baby, let's add factor 10 deficiency to our list. Okay, factor 10 deficiency, plate count, normal, bleeding time, normal, PT, prolonged, PTT, also prolonged. Touchdown, baby, that's how you do it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense.